Runs of truth are like the friends that will always tell you how it is. They will tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. G'day runners, how do you know when you're ready for your race? One technique I use is to perform a run of truth. This is a run at set paces, over terrain similar to a race, and recorded with a GPS and heart rate monitor. It will make more sense with a real example. To test if I'm able to hold my goal pace for a marathon, and I'll cover the other distances later. This is the run of truth that I perform. Which between an easy warm up and a cool down, the aim is to cover 21 kilometers where every kilometer you alternate the pace. Starting with a pace that's slightly faster than race pace, then slightly slower than race pace. And you alternate that all the way to cover those 21 kilometers. So you start with the fastest and you end with the fastest. So for example, my goal is to run faster than 258 for my upcoming marathon, aiming for about a 412 per kilometer pace. Therefore, I look at about two to seven seconds or roughly five seconds faster per kilometer in the fast ones. So that will give me 410 to a 405 per kilometer for the fast ones. Ideally, the slower kilometers will be just a little bit slower than the goal pace. What you want for those 21 kilometers is to average the pace for the marathon. I want the pace to work out to be about 412 per kilometer. That means if I'm running the fast ones at 405 to 410, then I'm looking at 415 to 420 per kilometer in the slower. That's a big run. And we need to make adjustments if you're attempting this type of run for the first time or you're a fair way out from your actual race. So we start with by performing the slower portion of those runs even slower. So maybe a, a minute per k slower. So looking at maybe 515 per kilometer instead of the 415, the 420. But you still keep the fast at the same speed, slightly faster than goal race pace. Now by doing this, you will still get the information that you need. You give yourself more chance of being able to complete the whole session and it allows for progression over time. Now to progress this session, we maintain the same speed for the faster ones, just that little bit faster than race pace, but we bring up the slowest end. So the slow might go from 5.15, then the next time you run the session, five minute Ks, 4.45, all the way up to when you're hitting the ultimate of just below that race pace. But what if you can't hold the pace for the entire distance? That's where you stop it. That's where your fitness is at. And if you can't, one, it tells you you can't hold it yet for that distance and you've got more work to do. You need more time. It gives you that point of progression as well. So rather than speeding up the slower portion, keep the paces the same next time you try this session and add the repeats until you can cover the distance that you're aiming for. And if we look at my own run, I've, I've gone out to try this session myself. It's exactly the paces as listed before. So I set up a workout in my Garmin, using Garmin Connect, set the warm up, no particular guidelines, warm up ends when I hit the lap button, then 10 repeats, one kilometer at 405 to 4, 410, then I set the slower one to range between five and 530, I wasn't too concerned exactly where that felt, but thought it would just hit at 515 per K. That gives me 10, 20 kilometers. Then the final added one more kilometer at 405 to 410. That gives the 21 kilometers cool down. And that ends with no particular guidance when the lap button is pressed. Transferred straight over to the watch. Now I picked a course that was predominantly flat, a few little rises, a couple of tiny small hills in the way, much like the marathon course of the Melbourne Marathon. And what we'll see is I didn't hit the full distance. I only got to 15 kilometers and then I wasn't able to hold that pace. And what we'll see is, and the point of this race is, if you understand where your heart rate zones are, and how they reflect in racing, you'll get to see that heart rate profile throughout your analysis of this run. So not only do you wanna be able to hold the paces, you want them to be at the right intensity. And for me, that pace, just that little bit above marathon pace, is sitting above my anaerobic threshold, which is way too fast for a marathon. So my marathon pace should be between the two lactate thresholds. Running a little bit faster than a marathon pace shouldn't put me at that top threshold. But it's put me higher than that at the moment, so that shows my fitness. A heart rate above 155 for me tends to be in that territory. 
So I climbed up into the 160s. There is no way I would be sustaining this, which makes me a little bit concerned that I'm only 12 weeks out. It's the run of truth. It's told me what I needed to know. Not quite what I wanted to hear. The challenge is, can I get my fitness to the level that I can sustain this pace at the right intensity that will allow me to hold it for the full marathon distance. To perform a run of truth for different distances, we take the same basic concepts. The run itself is between an easy warm up and an easy cool down. The main portion covers about half the race distance and you alternate slightly faster than race pace to slightly slower. Now the shorter the race distance, the shorter the distance of the intervals that you alternate. So for example, a half marathon will cover about 11 kilometers and alternate every one kilometer each time. For a 10K, we aim to cover about five kilometers and you alternate every one kilometer or every 500 meters. For a 5K, cover about three kilometers, alternating every 400 or 500 meters. And why not just run at your goal race pace? There's certainly a place for this, but by running over and under your goal race pace, you'll develop more of a sense of where your fitness really is at. It tests the barriers a little more, gives you the feel of the speeds a bit faster and a bit slower, so it will hopefully help your goal pacing. It will test how you handle and your body will adapt and respond to either burning through your carbohydrate stores a bit more, or dealing with a higher production of lactate. If you can't handle the slight variations of going a bit above pace, you might not be able to sustain that more even effort that you're aiming for on a race day. Now, is this run the ultimate guide to your race day performance? Of course it's not, but no single run is. But I like it because it gives a good indication to where your fitness really stands. Now, if you would try this run, let me know in the comments below and keep on running.